Good day YouTubers and welcome to another video. In this video I am changing the autopilot in my boat. If you've been following the channel you probably know I've had the Raymarine autopilot in there and while it's been okay, well, I thought it was okay, it was the first autopilot I had, it did have some unusual glitches but my biggest problem with it was the company policy where the autopilot would continue straight ahead of the waypoint unless you pushed the button to approve a turn. They reckon that was safe. I reckon it's bloody dangerous. You might be busy on something else really important for the safety of the boat. It goes straight ahead and compromises that safety you're trying to preserve. But that's not the whole point. I wanted it for trolling, and I wanted to be able to attend to my lines while it was following a trolling pattern. I told the salesman that, and they didn't mention that it wouldn't do that. So from day one, once I discovered that, once I had it out in the water and discovered that, I was really angry about it. But it wasn't worth replacing until now. It was sort of like a perfect storm, various factors combined, and anyway, I'm doing a big new fit out on the boat, and I'm replacing the autopilot with something that actually does what I want it to do. When this autopilot is following a route, it will get to the waypoint, beep a few times just prior to the waypoint to let me know it's going to turn in case I want to intervene to maintain safety, but then it'll go ahead and follow the route, turning at the waypoint if I don't do anything, and that's the way I think an autopilot should work. That's the way they work in an aircraft. Anyway, that's the background story of it. I've had my whinge about Ray Marine's policy on autopilots. Let's get into the video and have a look at fitting it to the boat. Raining all day today and tomorrow, so I've put paid to my plans to work on the dashboard. It shouldn't fiberglass in the rain. And I can't get the hot air gun down here with the lead running across the yard in the rain. So I'm having a look at the autopilot to see what I'll do about installing that. I don't reckon I'll put him there. I think I'll put him in up there somewhere. Yeah, I think I like him up there better. So I'll have to arrange for some more timber to go in to mount him on. Definitely. Uh, what else could I do? I could go further up. Depends how far those leads will reach. I don't want to extend them. So I'll see what happens. I'm just putting some connectors on the wires for the Perino autopilot. I'm using spade connectors, they're not something I usually like for a boat, but I've come across a new wrinkle for them. For one thing, any connector you use should always be a marine connector, heat shrink and uh, coated inside with hot glue so that when you shrink it down it creates a waterproof seal. What makes using these spade connectors feasible is you can put a heat shrink sleeve over them and completely seal them. So it just means that you can disconnect them if you have to. The other alternative apart from heat shrink is to use some self vulcanizing tape which is a bit easier to get off. So that's what I plan to do. Put some self vulcanizing tape over it and then some ordinary PVC tape just to seal the self vulcanizing tape. That will create a totally waterproof seal on it and should allow me to disconnect it if ever I need to. And the only reason I think I might need to on this connection is this is a connection to the motor. And at some point it's likely that the motor will need replacing. So I'm going to use the spades on this, some self vulcanizing tape to keep the moisture out, then some PVC tape over it. And if I ever do need to replace the motor, it should be a little bit easier. I don't always use a heat shrink gun, sometimes I get a little bit lazy and I just use the uh, cigarette lighter to do the heat shrink, but if you've got a gun handy, it's worth using it, and it's always a good idea to have a gun, a heat gun, they're handy for so many jobs. You might not, you, know, you might only use them uh, half a dozen times a year, but you know, when you use them, it's great. They're ready to connect. I'm not going to connect them yet. I've got to run the wires. I've got to set up the uh, unit itself 
in place and spill it in. So I've got a bit of work to do before I can connect them. But I just wanted to get them done out of the way because they might be a little bit awkward later on. I mounted the control unit for the autopilot up there under the gunnels. It'll be nice and dry there. There's no chance of getting any water on it. The only water that might get on it is if I spray a hose in the boat, which I generally don't do, mainly because there's a speaker there, so I don't want to get any water in that either. Tied up the cables that won't be used, the rudder sensor, the engine integration, and something else, I don't remember what it is, but I won't be using it. I've got this cable ready to go back to the hydraulic pump for the steering, and I'm running it underneath everything else because it's going to pulse the power as it turns the motor on and off so i don't want it um, running next to any of the uh, transducers or anything so those cables will be above it in the cable tray the fact that the speaker's right next to it doesn't matter because i never use the radio while i'm out in the water uh, the only time it ever gets turned on is if my wife's with me and we're overnighting, so we listen to the radio over night time. But other than that, it doesn't go on. So there's no interference to worry about there. This cable's running forward to power. This one's going to be the connect to the NMEA, and it will also run somewhere up out of the way. Probably run it up top there somewhere, just to keep it out of the way of uh, any power cables or anything. Uh, there'll be enough slack in the system if I need to get the box out for anything, but because Perino puts tails on everything, uh, I should never need to get the box out. I should be able to disconnect everything as needed. That's the finished installation. You can see it goes all the way up there under the gunnel. Got the side puppet back in, so there's a few other wires. This one's for the downrigger, so it's these. I've got the wires as neat as possible. I don't want to put too much of a bend on them. I could have pulled that one back a little bit more, I guess, but it's all right. NMEA just there. I've only used two of the sockets. Don't know whether I'll ever need the others, but it came with a, uh, a full connection T-piece plus the pass-throughs for the backbone. So that's it for the controller box. Pumps down there, that's the same pump that I had for the Raymarine. Still will run Raymarine cell with their unit. There was no need to replace the pump, so I saved that expense. That's the control unit on the dash. I'll demonstrate all that a lot more when I do the on-water segment once I get the MFD in. I've done a quick sort of test run of it. It's been really good. That section's coming up in the video shortly. But I'll go through the details of this a little bit later on. When I'm on the water and doing full sea trials of the whole setup, complete with MFD and everything, that'll make more sense then. There's also this remote control for it, and I got the neck loop around it. That didn't come with it, the red cord. I put that on so I can loop it around my neck when I'm busy trolling and just have it with me. Keep an eye out for boats, and if necessary, I can take control from wherever I am on the boat. Not that it's very far, it's only a few steps to the helm, but you never know, I might need to do something really quickly and I can do it from here. And this is the first time I've had it out on the water doing some sea trials on the autopilot. Just look at how straight that wake is. There's three settings on the autopilot. You can set it for a very relaxed mode where it wanders around a little bit before it goes back on course. That's if you want to baby the pump and not use it too much. You've got a medium mode where it keeps the course a lot better and you've got a really high performance mode where it's working the motor all the time to keep you smack bang on the course you want to follow. I guess you use that if you're in tight channels but if you're in tight channels I'd be taking the helm myself anyway. For whatever reason it's there I have it set on the medium mode and that is unbelievably straight. I set the Ray Marine on the medium mode and it would not keep the wake that straight. So Full marks to Furuno for their autopilot. I've only ever used a Raymarine before, but by geez, this one's good. Totally impressed. And that's it for the video. I reused the hydraulic pump, so if you want to see how that was fitted, you'll have to go back to my earlier video on fitting the Raymarine autopilot, where I fitted the hydraulic pump there. 
There was no sense in changing the pump because it worked whether it was on a Perino controller or a Raymarine controller. All companies will supply their own pumps for their autopilots, but in general they're all compatible as so long as they're using the same voltages. I'm totally stoked with this unit. I can't wait to get the MFD on and use the routing functions. But really, oh geez, if you want an autopilot, I highly recommend the Perino unit. I don't think you can go past it on this. I've only used the two of them, the Raymarine and the Perino, but wow, I'm just blown away with the performance of this. It is great. I'll do another video and show you how it works once I get the MFD in, and you can see it following a track. I've also got the remote control, which I haven't shown you yet. I'll show you that too. That is brilliant as well. For those videos are in the future, they will get there eventually. Until then, good fishing.